Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new Lucy on Cars. I've got the Volvo behind me again today. If anyone's new around here, you might be thinking, what's the Volvo V70 doing in your hands again? As I'm filming this video, we're borrowing this car for a little while and I thought I'd film a video today on seven hidden features. So if you guys have got this car already or you're thinking of purchasing one, this could be a good video for you. If like me, you're just quite nosy and like knowing things about random cars, then maybe you'll enjoy it as well, even if you're not a Volvo driver. If you're new around here, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button if you enjoy it today. I'm also gonna leave a link to my Instagram because I think when this video is going live I'm on a trip somewhere really cool so you might want to see what I'm up to maybe you don't if you don't fair enough if you do give me a follow so I'm gonna start with the more boring hidden features and we're gonna get to the fun stuff so make sure you keep watching for that so just very quickly this particular car is the 2011 Volvo V70 D5 SE Lux it's a twin turbo 2.4 litre diesel engine and I'm gonna skip past some of the stuff that may before have been like a hidden feature but I think it's pretty standard on cars these days for example holding down the unlock button will bring down all the windows and when pressing down the lock button the wing mirrors fold in which obviously is very handy to know that you've locked your car that's why I'd use it anyway but now we're going to get on to more exciting stuff so if you're wondering why I'm filming this video I don't know really particularly why I'm filming it I just thought it'd be quite interesting I quite like watching videos where you find out funny features with cars that aren't standard and that you might not know about if you weren't told about it or if you watched a video like this so hopefully we're helping people today discover their cars i did the exact same video with my range rover l322 about a year ago now and people seem to enjoy that so i thought why not do it on this as well so the first one is to do with the oil level so there's no dipstick in the engine bay there's actually a way to read your oil level from this beautiful armchair that I'm sat on right now. You don't even need to leave the comfort of these beautiful upgraded leather seats from the SE Lux here. So all we have to do, so we're not starting the engine, no foot on the brake. We're turning the ignition on by holding down the start button. We're then gonna to toggle through just here until, here we are, engine level okay. We're at the top of the max line. But I think that's really cool. It doesn't just say if it's okay or it's not okay. It gives you the literal reading of how high up the oil is. Um, and it's, it's on the max line at the moment, which is good. I think it's a bit extra, that information, that it gives you how much oil is actually in there instead of just saying we're good or we're not good. You can actually kind of read that as though it was a dipstick, but obviously it's an um, electronic version because we are in the 21st century here. I know a lot of enthusiasts and motoring purists probably prefer a good old dipstick, but... We're in a 2011 car here, guys. This is modern motoring. Number two, and if you're a fan of squeezing through narrow passages or trying to get through a tiny tight space as close as you possibly can either side, then you're gonna like this one. A lot of cars have just one button these days to fold your mirrors in and it's fairly standard and fairly normal. Volvo like to make you work for that. There's a special passcode and a special formula that you have to insert into the car to let the mirrors close together. We take two fingers, like so. You press your index finger on L and your middle finger on the R. It has to be those fingers, that's the most important bit here. If you use other fingers, it's not gonna work. Are you ready? You're gonna, we're gonna hold it down and press it and we're gonna see if these close. Are we ready? What did I tell you? Genius. But no, in all seriousness, it's a bit random that you've got to press both, but it's very handy to know. It's not that obvious because if you just press the L or just press the R, that's gonna be uh, selecting to change the angle of the mirror and not what I thought would be to close it it's it's something else now we're going to start her up for number three this is to do with the handbrake so it's an electric handbrake it's we've got the little lever down here it's not really a lever it's like a little push button on the right you don't actually have to oh, it's not even on actually let's start with putting the handbrake on once the handbrake's on when you first get in the car and you want to pull away you can go into drive instead of having to release the handbrake manually you can just drive away so can you see that from here the p promise you the handbrake is on and I'm not just lying I promise you, I did this earlier and the handbrake release as I pulled away. Maybe because I wasn't... Okay, let me try turning it off and on because I reckon it's because I wasn't in... I reckon it's because I wasn't in... I didn't have the handbrake on before I started the engine. So let's try now. No, we're not going anywhere. What? That worked earlier, George, didn't it? 100%. Yeah. I'm not making that up. When we pulled away from our house... I didn't release a handbrake and I drove and it came off. That is a that is a feature. So a bonus feature is that sometimes a hidden feature does not work. If anyone can explain that to me, please do in the comments because I promise you it worked 10 minutes ago and now it's not letting me drive anywhere without releasing it. But it's not really a hidden feature, is it? If it doesn't, how weird, how strange is that? I'm going to quickly talk about the paid partner for this video, which is a company called BetterHelp. 
I've got new glasses by the way, they're my driving glasses. So a huge percentage of my audience on this channel are actually male, like a big percentage versus female. But 40% of men, this is like a global statistic, 40% have never spoken to anyone about their mental health, but 77% have struggled with it one way or another. So these are like, scary big numbers. Therapy is a way that you can unpack any issues you might be having in work, in relationships, in your everyday life, or just in things that might be affecting your well-being in general. BetterHelp is basically a place where you get connected with a therapist that's right for you, and they do this by getting you to complete a questionnaire, like asking you a few questions, and they'll pair you with someone. You then speak to them via a phone call or a video call, or even just messaging if that's more comfortable for you. And these scheduled sessions are any time that's right for you, so it's super flexible and it can work around your busy lives. If the therapist isn't right for you, you can also change therapists very easily. And there is gonna be a link below if anyone wants to check it out. Therapy is such a good thing to do for your mind. I mean, I, I work out in the gym three, four times a week for my body. People don't think that you need to work out your mind as well. Like, it's the same thing. We look after our bodies so much, but we're forgetting about our minds and our minds deserve that same attention. I think it's been viewed traditionally as something like that you have to do something that is almost a negative thing like oh you need to go and get therapy but it's not the reality is it can just be part of our lifestyle when you're looking after both mental and physical health so like i said you can check out the link below you can head to betterhelp.com forward slash lucy on cars for 10 percent off of your first month of therapy and get matched with a therapist who's right for you who will listen and help so thanks again to better help for being the paid partner for this video but yeah back to the hidden features in this volvo v70 now for the next one we are going back to the mirrors as I'm saying that out loud, I'm wondering how many more things I can say about these mirrors. But we are going to do it again. For this next one, we go into the menu. We go down to car settings. We go into side mirror settings. We've got a whole like menu for the mirrors. You'll be pleased to know. Uh, and then here, auto tilt left mirror, auto tilt right mirror. So when you select these, we'll do it now. And we go into reverse. Can you see that mirror? The mirror basically tilts down for you to allow you to not curve your wheel. Now I'm saying this, I wonder if that's quite annoying, but that every single time you reverse, you can't see behind you because you're just looking at the curb. So it's obviously great for parking, but not great for like other reversing that you need to do. And then when we go back into drive, they stay down. <laughs> Let me just drive forwards a little bit and see. Yeah, that's still, oh no, sorry, my bad. They come back up, they do come back up. <laughs> now this next one, we're really getting into the nitty gritty stuff now. I hope you find this cool, I find this kind of thing cool. And if you're watching this far into this video, I think you find it cool as well. This has got another very important sequence. The choreography must be learnt beforehand because again, this, this can get quite serious if you do it wrong. A certain input is needed by the user in the exact order I'm about to say. So make sure you have your pen and paper ready. Please take notes, we don't wanna mess this one up. So this is to get the wipers up into service mode so you can actually do things with them because the way, the the way this car is built, the, the wipers are kind of hidden in the bonnet, so you can't really access them unless you do this. I'm sure someone before has tried to like, I don't know, change their wipers without pulling them up into this mode, um, and obviously you're not going to really be able to get to them to work on them. So to get there, what we need to do, to start with, if your engine is on, turn it off. If your engine is off, leave it off, okay? We need the ignition on, so we're going to put that back there. Now we hold on to the wiper store and lift it up for exactly 3.2 seconds. Thank you. You can then let go of the wiper stalk. And we're in service mode, so you can do whatever you want to your wipers. I'm not sure there's that much you can actually do to wiper blades, but they're there ready for you. And with one simple press of the start stop button again, they reset back to normal. Very good. For our final fact, now this is very, very hidden. I wouldn't have had, had no idea about this, and it's kind of bizarre how you get there, but if you've broken down, pretend we're broken down right now. I don't know what that noise was, ignore that. Um, if you're broken down right now, you can't obviously move the transmission. You can't move the gear stick into gear. You can't get into neutral to push the car. Because we're in an automatic, it feels like we're kind of stuck. We're not. If we head behind here, remove the obligatory polos, or potentially were these originals, then we're gonna get this tray up, little plastic tray here, take that out. We take the key, slide this little silver thing to get the actual key out. And then we put the key, there it is, pop the key. <laughs> I'm trying to do this without seeing it, so excuse me. There we are. Pop the key in here. I'm not actually gonna do it because I don't know if doing it does something that needs resetting, but pop the key in here and then give that a push down and it basically allows you to put the car into neutral and then roll away. Well, roll to safety, hopefully, not away. Away doesn't sound too safe. But yeah, that's basically it today, guys. That is the five interesting hidden features of this car. I cannot get this tray back in. 
must also remember to put the polos back. Very important. There we are. Um, thank you very much for watching this video today. Please comment below which facts you found the most interesting, or perhaps someone would do me the honours and rate them from their least favourite to their favourite. That'd be great. Or their favourite to least favourite, or both. Uh, depends how much time you've got on your hands. But I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you very soon in the next Lucy on Cars. Goodbye. The first one is a safety feature. So we all know Volvos are very safe cars, very reliable cars. You can't reverse. Cameraman, you need to be around this side. You can't reverse with the door open. So I'm going to demonstrate by trying to reverse with the door open. Please observe. Someone finds it useful today. The engine's on, we're in reverse, the hand breaks up, the door is open and we're ready. Imagine if we just floor it back. Accelerate. <laughs> okay, wait, let, okay. So we're reversing, the door's shut. What is going on? Why is it not stopping? Well, who? What? <laughs> what?